Hi, now suppose I have two fixed points, let's say A and B, and I'm looking for the locus of a point which is always equidistant from A and B, the same distance in other words. What would that locus be? Well, it's the perpendicular bisector of A and B, a line running through the middle of A and B, but at right angles to A and B. So, in other words, suppose we took a point, say, on here. Let's say we take a general point, call it P. Then the distance from A to that point, let's just mark that in, is going to be exactly the same as the distance from that point to B. We can mark that in as being the same distance just by putting two lines like that. Now suppose that the points A and B lie in the complex plane then what I'm saying is that the locus of a point which is equidistant from the two fixed points A and B in the complex plane is the perpendicular bisector of A and B. And what I want to do is get an equation then for this point P that runs along this perpendicular bisector. So if we construct, say, an argon diagram, then let's suppose then that this is the real axis. Okay, we just mark that in as the real axis. And we've got, say, our imaginary axis coming up through here. Okay, we just call that IM for the imaginary axis. Then if this is the origin here, then any point along here is given, say, by the complex number Z. So if we just draw in Z to, say, represent this point P here, mark that in as Z, I'm looking for an equation then. And suppose that the point A is given by the complex number Z1. Let's just mark that in Z1 there. And suppose B is given by the complex number, say, Z2. Then, if I consider AP as a vector, AP is given by minus Z1 plus Z, or Z minus Z1. So just write that in here, Z minus Z1. And if I was looking at the length of AP, it would be the modulus of that vector. So I could write that as the modulus of Z minus Z1. And similarly, if I was looking at the vector B to P, that would be minus Z2 followed by Z plus Z, or Z minus Z2. Let's just write that in, Z minus Z2. And the length of BP would be given by the modulus of that. And because these two lengths, AP and BP, are exactly the same, then I can equate these two. And this is the general form of the perpendicular bisector, then, when we're looking at the locus of a point Z that is equidistant from two fixed points, A and B, in the complex plane. Now generally, we denote any point P, say, as given by the coordinates x, y. So the complex number Z would be x plus y, i. And I've got a question for you here that you might like to try. So we'll just border this off here. And here's the question. It's to sketch the locus of Z and find the Cartesian equation for which the modulus of Z minus 3 minus 2i is equal to the modulus of 5 minus 3i minus Z. Now, this is the equation for a perpendicular bisector. But you'll need to do a little bit of work to get these two in the correct format here. But why don't you just pause the video and give this a go and uh, you can come back when ready and just check your work solution with mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So let's just see how you got on. Well, first of all, 
we've got to get them into this particular format. And the first modulus just needs a little bit of work on, so we'll just change that to the modulus of Z minus, and then we'll just create this Z1 here. But we're going to have to put this in brackets, so if we pull out minus first of all, it's going to have to be 3 plus 2i to give us this result, minus 3 minus 2i. So that is now equivalent to this and in the correct format. Now when it comes to this part here, we need to rearrange this, put it in the correct format like we've got here. And what we do is we change this to the mod of minus, we just pull out minus 1 in fact, and write in brackets Z minus 5 plus 3i. So that when we expand the bracket, we get exactly the same as this. But when we have the modulus of minus 1 multiplied by Z minus 5 plus 3i, this is exactly the same as the modulus of minus 1 multiplied by the modulus of Z minus 5 plus 3i. And the modulus of minus 1 is just simply 1. So we can change this then to equal just simply the modulus of Z minus 5 plus 3i. But then if I pull out a minus here, I can write that as 5 and then minus 3i. Okay? So if we just copy this back in, we've therefore got Z minus 3 plus 2i, and that is all in a modulus, is equal to Z, the modulus of Z minus all of 5 minus 3i. And we've got this now in the correct form. So what we've got then is a perpendicular bisector. And if we were to sketch this, okay, it's going to look something like this. If we have our imaginary axis, IM, okay, and our real axis here. Now we've got two points, one's at 3, 2, and the other's at 5, minus 3. So if I was to go, say, three units across, two up, let's just suppose that's one point. Okay, let's mark that in as 3, 2. And we've got another point here at 5, minus 3. 5 across, 3 down. Let's say it's that one there. 5, minus 3. All right. Then we've got our perpendicular bisector. Through there, it's going to look something, say, like that. And any point on here is given by the complex number Z. So we've got Z there. Okay, so just a sketch there of what is actually happening. Now in the next part it says find the Cartesian equation. So to do this, okay, what we would do is we would say let Z, okay, equal, say, x plus i, y. All right, remember p, this point p representing z any along this line here is given by x, y. So we can define it like this. So what we're saying then, if we turn to this equation here, we've got that in place of z, we've got the modulus then of x plus i, y minus the 3 plus 2i, okay, is equal to the modulus of z again, so it's going to be x plus iy, and then minus the 5 minus 3i. So we just about squeeze that in there, okay? Now that we've got that, let's just clean this up. Let's group the real and imaginary parts together. So Therefore, what we'll have is the modulus then of x minus 3. 
that's the real part there and then for the imaginary part we'll put plus i and then we'll group together the y and then minus 2 alright so we've got that modulus equals and the same on this right hand side here we've got x minus 5 as the real part and then plus i times y plus 3 okay y plus 3 okay and then we'll just complete the modulus there now when we're finding the modulus then this is exactly the same as doing the square root of the sum of the squares then of these two parts the real part and the imaginary part so it's going to be the square root of x minus 3 all squared plus y minus 2 all squared and again this is going to be equal to the square root over here of all of x minus 5 squared plus y plus 3 all squared now if we square both sides it's going to remove the square roots and also if we expand the brackets at the same time what we therefore end up with is if we square this out it's going to be x squared minus 6x plus 9 and then for this bracket here it's going to be plus y squared minus 4y and then plus 4 and that's going to equal and squaring the x minus 5 out is going to give us x squared minus 10x plus 25 and then we've got plus y squared plus 6y and then plus 9 now I can see that we can cancel out the x squareds here we can cancel out the y squareds on both sides so if we group together the x's suppose I add 10x to both sides we've got 10x minus 6x which is going to be 4x so we therefore have 4x and then if I subtract 6y from both sides we've got minus 4y minus 6y is going to be minus 10y then finally if we do 9 add 4 which is 13 and we've got 25 plus 9 which is 34 so if we subtract 34 from both sides we've got 13 minus 34 gives minus 21 so we've got minus 21 and that equals 0 and there's your Cartesian equation then for the locus of Z okay well that brings us now to the end of this particular video where we've looked at the locus of a point which is equidistant then from these two fixed points A and B given by this equation